find a new graph invariant called omega in terms of degree sequence. He has published around 250 research articles with citation more than 3,500. And his uh, H index is 29. So, Professor, welcome you and thank you very much for uh, joining us in second workshop on advancement in mathematics and application. Thank you, my brothers. Uh, hello to everyone. Uh, I'm very pleased to be a part of this nice uh, workshop, and uh, I hope to uh, continuation of this kind of meetings uh, for many years. Thank you for organizing. It's a hard work, I know. Uh, so I wish every success to Vama 2024, and especially for inviting, I would like to thank uh, to my friend uh, Mohammed Kamran Jamil and all the organizing committee members. Uh, I hope it will be a good meeting uh, to be remembered. So, uh, my friends, today uh, I will talk about, uh, before starting my presentation, I will talk about uh, modeling with graphs. How uh, we can model things from daily life by graphs and how we can use mathematical methods to get some information in real life problems. This is a very important topic because every day people who are aware of this fact are doing a lot of graph theory papers. Probably you are aware of it. If you are an editor, if you are a uh, referee, more graph theory papers you must be receiving each day. So, my friends, uh, graph theory started, of course, thousands of years ago. In modern times, uh, people accept the starting date by Euler in 1736, about 300 years ago. But graph theory became very important in the last 70, 80 years due to computational power, change improvements in computational power. So nowadays, many people are using graph theoretical methods combined with algebraic, combinatoric, topological methods uh, to solve chemical problems, medical problems, lots of uh, for example, for COVID-19, I, I saw at least 100 papers in graph theory. So, uh, of course, these kind of papers are just trials. They cannot solve, uh, they cannot recover any illnesses uh, only, but they are steps in uh, recovering from finding a, a cure for this kind of uh, illnesses, for example. My friends, graphs are very basic structures. In topology, we have them. In algebra, we have them. In discrete group theory, we have them. Because graph, a graph is simply some vertices joined with some edge. OK? So this could be modeling, for example, some group of people. If two people are in inter interaction, so there is a line between them. If not, no line, no edge between them, no connection. So this shows who is related to who, or companies, which company is related to which company, or countries, which, compa which country is related to other countries, or neurons in your brain for example in your body which neuron is related to which neuron or in chemistry which molecule which atom is related to which atoms in the molecule molecular structure so actually the most important uh, applications of graphs in last century uh, appearing in chemistry, in 1947, 
nearly 80 years ago, there was a chemist, Harold Wiener. He defined some formula, a very short paper, three or four pages, consisting of two parts, added two parts, okay? One part became very popular and called Wiener Index later on. It's about uh, using this uh, formula, using this index, Wiener Index, you can order boiling points of some isomers, for example, of some uh, molecular graphs, like modeling the ones modeling uh, alkanes, for example. That's what he did. In 1947, he used a graph model and a formula for this model, for this graph, to obtain boiling degrees, boiling temperatures of different isomers. Isomers are the same formula, have the same formula, the same chemical, but they have some different physical chemical properties, like boiling point, like melting point, lots of things. So for boiling points, which one you prefer if you have a factory, for example, you have three choices. Every day you have to boil these chemicals. Of course, the one boiling at lowest degree is most popular, most preferable. Because you don't need to energy, too much energy to boil up to high degrees. OK, so this formula in 1947 became very popular and got, of course, a lot of citations naturally. After that, in 1947 and the later years, uh, over 3000 topological indices, that is mathematical formulae defined by chemists, mathematicians, social scientists, pharmacologists, neuroscientists, a lot of people studied these kind of things because instead of uh, laboratory equipment, chemicals, people, animals to try on, lots of things, uh, money and time, that is in brief, you don't need them anymore. Because if you can model this case, this example, real life situation by a graph, then, my friends, you can put mathematical methods in order to deal with this problem. When you use mathematical methods like matrices, adjacencies, incidences, uh, formula, any topological index, any parameters for graphs, this kind of mathematical methods, uh, or linear algebraic methods uh, like eigenvalues, which are giving energy, graph energy, for example, uh, we can obtain some mathematics, some numbers. The most important thing is, for especially for young friends uh, who are listening to me, if you have some meaning for these numbers, then it's okay, it's perfect. But in 90% of papers which are written on mathematical sites uh, of topological graph indices, there are no applications at all. So only some of them are important uh, and have applications. Try to find such applications if you want to do some uh, better work, better quality work. So, my friends, let me share. Uh, my screen to start my talk. Yes, uh, I mentioned a little bit about modeling with graphs. In the next part, I will talk about uh, some graph invariant, which is very closely related to Euler invariant, Euler characteristics. Uh, in topology, it's defined for 
uh, for surfaces, uh, if you know this kind of uh, things in topology, uh, it is a fixed number. This Euler number is a fixed number for every surface, orientable, uh, non-orientable, doesn't matter. Uh, for every kind of surface, it takes a special value. This omega invariant that my student, my PhD student years ago uh, observed, and we have written papers on it, of course, naturally, uh, became very popular as it gives a lot of topological and combinatorial and algebraical results with calculations. So today, in the rest of my talk, my friends, I will be talking about omega invariant, how it appeared, why it is important, what are its properties, and what kind of open problems you can solve by omega invariant. Okay? So let's start with fundamentals. This is a joint work with my two ex PhD students, Hajar and Aisu. Written with multiplicities, a degree sequence is some set like this. D of G, degree sequence of G, is consisting of some ones, some twos, some threes, and some deltas. This is the multiplicity, the number of ones. In a set, you know, you cannot write the same thing uh, many times, so we use the multiplicity in case of, uh, instead of the other notation, which is no good. So some of these multiplicities, if for example, there are no trees inside uh, this graph, which there are, of course, uh, three to the zero, it should be, or there is no, there will be no tree at all, okay? For example, this graph in picture has degree sequence one to the two, that means, there are two vertices of degree one. Degree one, you see. What it means, degree one? This vertex is connected to only one other vertex, okay? Why this has degree three in the middle? Because it is connected to the upper one, lower left one, and lower right one. So there are three vertices, three edges, incident to this vertex so it has vertex degree three degree vertex degree is very important in defining topological indices my friends thousands of papers in total and maybe in every year are written on uh, this kind of uh, indices dealing with usually some mathematical shapes which are claimed to have some chemical importance or medical importance. Sometimes they have, sometimes they don't, unfortunately. But even the mathematical side is so strong, so nice. So even just for mathematics sake, we can study uh, topological indices, topological graph indices. So my friends, this is degree sequence. Clearly, if you have the picture, you can just count the numbers, degrees, and you can form this set. On the contrary, if some set is given, some set is given consisting of non-negative integers, okay, like the one before, we wonder if there is a graph having this vertex uh, degrees, okay? We wonder about existence of a graph with these numbers as vertex degrees. So in this case, if there is one, then this graph is a realization of this set. And degree sequence is called realizable. Okay? This is very important because my talk is about realizability. You are given some numbers. One, two, three, four. Can you draw a graph? with some conditions, or in general, having four vertices of degrees one, two, three, and four. Is it possible? In some cases, it's clearly not possible, but in some cases, it's more complicated. 
I gave an example. You see, one to the one, two to the three, three to the one. That means one plus three plus one, five vertices are there because these are the multiplicities, remember? Of degrees one, two, 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 and three. You see, one, two, 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 and three. And in the second graph, one, two, 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 and three. So that means, my friends, very important, this set is realizable and at least there are two realizations, at least two. Do we have any idea about the existence of a third one, fourth one? Or next question, natural question, how many realizations are there? Okay? This is an open problem, my friends. For a given set like this, or like this in general, how many graphs are there? This is still very open. At the end of my talk, I will be giving some ideas, uh, some algorithms that we have been obtaining to solve this problem. But complete result, complete solution is not possible yet. It's not there yet. It will be possible, I believe. So, my friends, this is realizability. So, another observation you should have is for some set of non negative integers, we can have more than one, not only one, more than one. Of course, when the set is big, the number of realizations is also big. Okay? So, what is the motivation for the definition for obtaining omega invariant, for discovering omega invariant? I will not go into details, but it's a nice story. And uh, I didn't believe it at the moment, at the beginning, because my PhD student observes very, very strong results. But I didn't believe that uh, many graph theorists for hundreds of years could miss that so my friends this is a well-known information in a tree the number of leaves leaves means degree one vertices graph theory we call them pendant because they are pending okay like the clock pending clock okay pendulum so my friends the number a1 of the leaves is given by this formula a1 which is the number of ones, for example, in this figure, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the number A1 is eight because there are eight ones and there are twos and fives as well. So if you want to find eight, you have to calculate this number. Of course, there is A2 and A5 only. So uh, formula is uh, becoming very short. But when you calculate this number, the right hand side will give you eight for sure. So this is only for trees. My student who has been drawing thousands of figures, graphs, because he was not working everywhere, anywhere. He was free all the time. That was good for me. He was drawing lots of cases, not only trees, other graphs, cyclic graphs, acyclic graphs, uh, bicyclic graphs, unicyclic graphs, every kind of graphs. So, my friends, uh, at the end, we come up with this right hand side, the same right hand side you see, which is equal to A1 in a tree, but it is changing for non-tree graphs, cyclic graphs. And this number is changing for every graph type. Okay? So you remember, this is the same formula, A3 to A4, because we will be using it. So I will go through it uh, a little bit, uh, spending time. A3 to A4, 3A5, 4A6. 5a7, you see the pattern. It goes up to delta minus 2a delta minus a1. Minus a1 is natural, actually. Why minus a1 is looking different from the others? Because 
for i equals to one, for i equals to one, this becomes minus one, minus one a one. You see, but if you put three or some larger number, coefficient is positive. So this is natural. Another other observation you should have: there is no a two here. A two is not there. That means when calculating omega invariant for a graph for a degree sequence, the number of twos, which is a two, is not not important. It does not change anything. I will explain it geometrically. So, for i equals to two, algebraically it's clear. I equals to two, the coefficient is zero. So a two has coefficient zero. It does not appear in the formula. A one is at the end. We start with a three, the number of threes. Then two times a four, three times a five, up to the end, up to the largest vertex degree. Now, my friends, uh, with your permission, I will give very basic properties, and then I will propose some problems. Solving them, I will finish. So omega is actually two times m minus n. If you know the number of vertices and edges, this number is this formula is much easier. But if you have a degree sequence, large degree sequence, you have to calculate n and m, the size and order of the graph. Okay, so. Uh, sometimes it is more difficult. The omega formula is much easier to use. So this is something to remember. Of course, what you can observe out of this theorem, m and n are integers, being number of edges and vertices. So their difference is an integer. The omega invariant is always an even integer. You realize that. So. Omega invariant is defined for some graph or some degree sequence. Degree sequence is randomly given set. So if you change the set, you can obtain sometimes odd values of omega. That means there is no graph if omega is odd, because omega must be even numbers for any graph. Okay? If it's not an even number, then it's not a graph. There is no graph out of it. Okay. This is handshaking lemma in graph theory, actually. The sum of vertex degrees is equal to two times m. This is a result of this. My friends, another very important result is for trees. A simple connected graph, planar graph, actually, to be a tree. The sufficient and necessary condition is omega equals to minus two. So if you have some set of integers and if you want some connected graphs, then if omega equals to minus two, you will have only trees. This is very strong condition. If you calculate omega out of the set of integers, some integers, and you got minus two. That means it must be, if connected, of course, it must be a tree. Okay. Actually, I will not go into details, but all graphs, endless family, of course, can be grouped into three families. The one in the middle is omega equals to minus two. Omega equals to minus two. The second one is omega is greater than or equal to zero, my friends. And the last family is omega is less than or equal to minus four. So you remember, omega is an even number. Minus two is one family, okay? Corresponding, if connected, to trees. If not connected, some other graphs are possible. But if connected, the condition is connectedness, then it must be a tree. So in the middle family, only trees and some other uh, derivatives are there. On the right hand side, omega being an even number, it could not be zero. So at least zero, it could be zero or positive. And in the final part, omega is 
it cannot be minus three, minus one. So it could be uh, maximum minus four or less than minus four. Okay, my friends. So there are three groups. Every graph, every planar graph can be put into this or this or this family. For these three families under this classification, we have given algorithms, theorems, they are all different. They are all different. So this is a very nice, very strict classification. Usually in graph theory, there are lots of uh, classifications. For example, according to number of cycles, according to uh, whether they contain some triangles or not, according to their simpleness, according to their component numbers. Lots of things you can use to classify graphs, but this omega invariant is different, giving different classification, and these three families are there only. Very strong result about the number of faces. There are some graphs, and there is a degree sequence. There is a set of positive integers like this. You wonder which one could be possible as a realization of the given set. You cannot do too much calculations. You don't have time. But by counting the number of faces, you can decide about this could be possible, this is not. You can decide about this because the number of faces of any realizations of this set is related to omega invariant. The number of faces regions, R is for regions, is equal to omega invariant, which is an even number, you remember, divided by two, that means this is an integer, plus the number of components. For example, if you want connected graphs, then the number of faces will be a half omega plus connected means only one component plus one. Okay. If you want two components, I will give examples in a minute. Then omega divided by two plus two is the number of faces. If you have more or less, then you can eliminate these graphs. Okay. This is very uh, useful in uh, theory and in practice, actually. Now, my friends, uh, as I promised, I will give you uh, a few problems and very briefly solutions. And with some algorithms, I will finish a, I prom as I promised. A given set, you see, 1 to the 3, 3 to the 1, up to 7 to the 1. Is it realizable? And what is the cyclomatic number? What is the cyclomatic number? The number of independent cycles in the graph. Okay? And the condition is connected. C is 1. So, you remember what was the condition? This must have even omega integer. Let's calculate omega integer. Omega is 14. Just once I will do it for you. You remember we started with trees, the number of trees. You remember the formula, I hope. A3, which is 3. We have 3. Then 2 times A4. Why 2 times? Because 4 minus 2. You remember in the formula, I minus 2. 3 minus 2 is 1. So 1 is not used here, just A3 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. We had 3 before. 6 more. We got 9 at the moment. Then uh, 5. 5 minus 2 is 3. 3 times 1. 3 times 1 is 3. 9 plus 3. We had already 12. 5 times 1. 7 minus 2 times 1. Uh, so uh, we had 9 to 12. 5 more, 12 plus 5, 17. 17 minus A1, you remember formula. Uh, so 17 minus 3, we get 14. Okay? 
You can search for omega invariant and uh, my name, if you write more to be more specific, you will get about 60, 70 papers and thesis. Uh, so you can get all the information in more detail there. OK. So this is realizable because it's an even number. So this is a nice condition for realizability. Actually, there are lots of realizability conditions, algorithms like Havel Hakimi process, for example, about 70 years old, 60, 70 years old. Uh, but this is more practical. If this is even, omega variant is even, then he is realizable. That means there are at least uh, one graph or maybe more graphs out of this set. The second part of question was cyclomatic numbers. You remember the number of regions are, what was it? Omega a half plus the number of components. Connected means one. The number of components is one. There is only one part, one piece of graph, okay? You cannot separate the graph into two subgraphs, uh, discrete graphs. So uh, what is the result? Seven plus one, eight. So any graphs, any graphs out of this set, that means any graph having these vertex degrees, okay, will have eight faces, eight faces exactly, okay? Very good to eliminate others. Second problem, I will go a little bit faster. What is the maximum and minimum number of components? Now, my friends, you are given some integers, four threes, two fourths, and two fives. That means eight vertex. Eight vertices are there in the graph. You want eight vertex component, uh, eight vertex graphs out of this set with vertex degrees given. It could be connected. That means one component. It could be disconnected. So that means at least two components are there. This is minimum. We we need a formula for minimum number of components. And also we want to do minimum pieces to get maximum number of components. Every component should be very small containing only one or two, maybe three vertices, so that the number of components around will be maximum, okay? For the minimum, the contrary, we need to look for larger components, okay? We want to combine everything as possible. So this is the number, lower bound number for number of components. It is at least minus omega divided by two. This is good if omega is negative, but here omega is positive for this set. I didn't calculate, but believe me, it is 12. Many times I calculated. So my friends, by this corollary, what is the lowest uh, value of C, the number of components is, minus 12 over to minus 6. Of course, C is a natural number, counting numbers. It must be at least 1. So knowing that it is at least minus 6 is no good because we already know it's at least 1. Okay? So we take it as 1. Minimum number of component is 1. That means it could be connected, one component, or more. That means disconnected. Both are possible. Now only one thing is missing. What is the maximum number of components? Minimum is one, good. Minimum possibility is one. This theorem we gave in 19, uh, 2000, 2019, Cmax, the number of maximum number of components is a sum of two parts. The first one is about even DIs, even DIs, two, four, six, eight, like this. And you add up all AIs, A2 plus A4 plus A6 plus A8, up to the end. And you do the same calculations for odd vertex degrees, A1, A3, A5, A7, up to the last one, okay? 
but this must be divided by two. It is just very basic graph theory calculations. Because each component, being as a graph, must have the sum of vertex degrees even. If you have odd numbers added up, you can get odd and even numbers. And if you get odd number, you cannot divide it by two. So this formula would be wrong. Okay? So uh, it's a uh, very basic actually argument, but I don't have time, unfortunately. So the maximum number of components is this. So let's go back to our result. The minimum number of components was one. So that means connected graphs are possible. This is, this is the maximum number of components. That means component number is maximum. Components are small. So you see C maximum is, you remember, the even vertex degrees, only four. How many fours are there? Two. Two is written here. Odd vertex degrees, three and five. How many three and five are there? Four plus two, four plus two. It was multi to be multiplied by a half. You remember the formula? Two sums. So we get five. So my friends, maximum you can draw this uh, set as a graph with five components. You cannot have six components, seven components. Maximum, you see this is this realization. This is a vertex of degree four. You see in the middle, in the left, this is a vertex of degree four. This is a vertex of degree four. You see, this is it. This is a vertex of degree three, 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 three. There are four trees, you remember. And this is a vertex of degree five, two here, two here, and one here. And this is also a vertex of degree five. So they are combined, uh, joined together. So this is one of the realizations. It's not unique, of course. Third problem. How we can decide whether a realization of a given degree sequence is connected? Uh, thinking of time, I will uh, very briefly pass about this. Uh, there are, you remember the classification into three parts, into three families. Uh, this is helping us in this one. So just one example. For example, this set, this set, one to the six, four to the two consisting of eight vertices, okay? You see, this is degree four. This is of degree four. The remaining vertices, six of them, are of degree one. In the second graph, having two components, the first one was connected, you see. The second one is not connected, separated two pieces, okay, into two pieces. And this is of degree four. This is of degree four. The remaining vertices are of degree one. So again, the same degree, same set, same set. So this is a realization of this set. This is a realization of this set. So that means what is the result? Sometimes we get connected, sometimes disconnected realizations out of a set, out of a degree sequence. So what is guaranteed? This is the most important result I give. If you want realizations of some integers, some degree sequence, to be connected or disconnected, you have to use this formula. Otherwise, you have no idea about this. If omega is maximum minus four, okay, minus four or less, then all graphs are disconnected. But on the contrary, if omega is at least minus two, then it is possible to have both, which is called potentially connected. There are some connected realizations, some disconnected realizations with two pieces, three pieces, four pieces, okay? Both are possible. So omega is less than or equal to minus four is certain. No other condition, no worries must be connected, disconnected, all realizations. This is uh, some examples I will pass. How we can find connected realizations? This is also depend, this is also depend to classification. I, if you remember, I mentioned that 
for each of these three classes, three families, I have given, we have given different algorithms. So this is one of them. Uh, for example, in the case omega is zero, we start with an eight gun, octagon. Why eight gun? Eight gun means two plus three plus one plus two. So apart from ones, apart from ones, all the number of all vertices, which is two, five, six, eight. You start with an eight gun, octagon. Then you see you place the other pendant vertices. As they are pendant, they must be connected to one vertex on the cycle octagon. And this is a realization. Of course, the theorem says, I, we gave, there are also cycle seven, cycle length six, cycle length five, cycle length four, three, two, and one if you count this as a cycle and this one. Uh, so it is between eight and one, okay? This is for omega is zero. In other cases, we gave different algorithms, we gave different results, how we can realize in different ways uh, a given degree sequence. And finally, the final problem uh, before uh, my last words, how we can decide whether a given degree sequence is potentially connected. What was potentially connected? We learned just a few slides ago. If degree sequence is giving at the same time some connected, some disconnected. Okay? So this is potentially connected. You can use the word potentially for any word. Like, for example, potentially continuous, potentially compact. That means at least one with this uh, required property here, connectedness. So this is an old problem. 1964, Edmonds gave a theorem. He said that for a degree sequence, this degree sequence is potentially connected even only if this condition is satisfied. This condition is satisfied. The sum of vertex degrees is at least two times n minus one. You have to calculate vertex degrees. You have to calculate n and this number, and you have to compare both numbers, my friends. We updated this result 60 years later, and we said that these potentially connected the same condition, you see, these potentially connected if and only if, Omega is at least minus two, which is much easier, believe me. And an example, this is Edmund's theorem. This is Edmund's theorem. You need all these calculations. Not too much, but it's still, uh, it could be much larger. And with omega invariant, we get six. Omega invariant is six. So it is at least minus two. That means it is uh, potentially connected, my friends. Sometimes that is, Omega invariant simplifies the existing results. Uh, this is also another good use. Now, uh, only a few slides, I will be telling you what we are doing uh, with this uh, omega invariant at the moment. Lots of calculations we do is uh, if you search uh, Google, you will see lots of uh, papers about line graphs, total graphs, uh, Cayley graphs, uh, strong graphs, uh, Sierpinski graphs. Uh, you can calculate omega invariant and you, uh, its properties for different graph classes or in general. Uh, so this is about the number of realizations. I mentioned earlier, I say that it's an open problem. That means you are given some numbers, integers, one, one, two, two, three, four, five, six, like this, okay? You wonder about how many ways we can realize a graph out of this set, okay? One, two, three, ten, ten thousand, ten million. It could be anything. It could be very large if you have large set. So, we gave an algorithm, very briefly I will mention, 
uh, and D is the required number, the total number of realizations. And and D of C will be the number of realization with C components. If you have uh, connected ones, if you are looking uh, the connected realizations, then you get and D of one. If you want to two component realizations and D of two. Why we define these formulas? Why did we use these notations? Because you remember we have formula for the minimum number of components and maximum number of components. We know the bounds. So your set is given one, one, two, five, six, ten, ten thousand. But doesn't matter. These integers will be realized in different ways. But how many ways? We know that it could have minimum, let's say, three components and maximum five components. So we have three cases, three components, four components and five components, not any other things, okay? If you can calculate this number, this number and this number, the sum of them will give you all realizations. So that means we use the number of components because we have formula for lower and upper bounds, which makes us advantages, okay? So first we know calculate, calculating how we calculate C max, okay? You remember one half times the odd vertex degrees multiplicative, multiplicative, multiplicities and the even numbers as well. So we calculate C max, then, draw how many graphs are there uh, if possible uh, we draw these possible component uh, graphs uh, i couldn't say sorry uh, i will give you an example i'm thinking of it find the ways to join two components now let's let's go to uh, example let's go to example this is one example two two four six eight this is containing only even numbers this has some purpose of course now we calculate c max c max is five so this is five component realization only one only one possible uh, situation now we combine my friends it's very important the key point is here two components how we can do this for example in the first one we combine these two okay this is of vertex degree red one is uh, of degree two black one is also of degree two so we join these two vertices onto the same component okay reducing the number of components from five to four the degree set is the same two 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 four six eight here it was two two four six eight in any of these you see two two eight four six the degree set is the same so these are all different realizations so far we calculated five component ones only one four component ones uh, lots of them now next you do the same to calculate three components then two components then one component if the minimum number is one so my friends there is only one problem we are trying to get rid of some of them are the same for example this right hand side realization is the same with this third one on the left okay so that means sometimes some realizations going different ways gives the same result okay so this is not good we have to eliminate so if you eliminate you have to calculate some methods for this you have to develop some methods then you just uh, delete uh, this repeating realizations and at the end we we have some formula, uh, for example, and C max minus one, M4, M4 we can calculate, for example. Then N3, N2, and N1, giving the total, uh, the required number. 
So my friends, thank you for listening. Uh, these are the references. The first one is uh, the definition, a new graph invariant. It was in Turkish Journal of Analysis and Number Theory, uh, short paper. And the second one is also the continuation paper in the same year, 2019, actually, at the beginning of. Uh, this was about extremal problems on components and loops. The third one is about cyclicness, omega invariant re in relation with cyclicness. This is Edmund's theorem I mentioned. This is Hakimi's and Havel's uh, realizability conditions I mentioned briefly. This is about omega invariant and matching numbers. This is about connectedness with omega invariant. This is nullities with matching number and cyclomatic number. This is uh, topological indices with in, re in relation with uh, omega invariant. This is cyclicness and omega invariant. This is line graph independence number and omega invariant. This is union join corona. These are graph products uh, in relation with omega invariant. This is line graph of unicyclic graphs in relation with omega invariant. You see, there are lots of papers. Uh, there are still possibility of uh, hundreds of papers uh, for omega invariant, and you can calculate uh, them, this number, for uh, many graph classes, derived graphs, graph operations. Uh, so you can do lots of calculations. If you need any help uh, with uh, some points in my talk, uh, you can always contact me by email, uh, WhatsApp, uh, whatever. I will be happy to answer your questions. So thank you for listening. Uh, I hope uh, the, con the rest of the meeting will be uh, very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ismail. Thank you for such a uh, wonderful talk. And uh, you are very uh, uh, excited. In, uh, when you are giving talk. And especially thank you for uh, guiding our participant about the concept of topological indices and how they can contribute in a good way in this area. As you mentioned in uh, uh, first few minutes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one more thing, in my last lecture, I discussed Havel-Hakimi technique to uh, for the realization of the graph and students felt a little bit difficult but now the, we have an easy way <laughs> so surely i will sure. share this yes this with my students that we have some uh, and other easy way if we have a degree sequence so we can use omega invariant for this yeah. and lastly putting some conditions. Work on, yes yes putting some conditions. conditions on degree set you can obtain different uh, results this is possible yes, yes. just keep in mind uh, and yet I didn't work on Omega invariant, but uh, after your detail and very basic uh, concept about Omega invariant, I am very much interested uh, on this uh, index to work. And surely I will. Uh, Thank let's you. move to the uh, question answer session. Uh, so audience, if we have questions, please raise your hand. Okay, Professor, I have a question. Uh, last question. Uh, do we have some uh, uh, some results or papers that have uh, comparison between omega invariants and some other famous invariants like Zagreb index, like multiplicative or binary index? Yeah, that's a very good question, uh, Mohammed. Uh, for topological indices, of course, the result is endless. You can obtain uh, some connections with topological indices like first Zagreb index and omega invariant, second Zagreb index and omega invariant. Uh, just keep in mind that omega is very closely related to the number of phases, okay? Uh, cyclomatic number. Actually, Ivan Gutman, uh, when uh, I mentioned to him, uh, in Karagöy watch uh, about this uh, omega invariant first. He said he's very closely related to cyclomotic numbers. 
which is the number of independence uh, faces. So if you deal, if your topological index is about the number of faces, then there will be perfect condition. But otherwise, even if not connection is there, you can find some mathematical connection between topological indices and uh, omega invariant. As you see in the references, we have done some connections with nullity, with uh, independence yes. numbers. Every graph parameter, eccentricity, status, whatever you have, coloring number, chromatic numbers, energy, uh, eigenvalues, whatever you study with, uh, labeling, uh, any, anything, coloring. Uh, everything could be related to omega invariant mathematically, but if you have something related to the number of faces, then it perfectly fits, believe me. Uh, yes, very good. Uh, in uh, 2020 or 21, I uh, defined a face index very first time because oh, there is no. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen it recently in some papers, face index. Yeah, it is. Yes. Uh, it's going around the cycle of any vertex. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes, so yes, maybe, I've just seen it. Yes, so maybe in, uh, we can have some connection between an omega invariant and phase index. As you said, the phase index, uh, the, sorry, the omega index is very helpful uh, for the phasing. It's somewhere on the uh, table. Uh, I just, uh, <laughs> I was learning. I, I took a note that uh, I should work on this problem, phase index. It's just somewhere here. <laughs> Okay, okay, then Professor, remember me. We will do it together. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, inshallah, inshallah. So, Professor, that's inshallah. all. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much.